Well, hello there, motherfuckers, and welcome to your SummerSlam 2016 predictions video. And uh, as you all know, I'm not crazy about this card. It's a very weird card. Um, it just very strangely put together. I don't know what it is. It's like a mixture of new stars. And some people will argue, some of the people who are in favor of the current direction of Raw that this is like a card of the future. I say this is just like a thrown together card. This does not look like SummerSlam. This looks more like Battleground. And to tell you the truth, I think the Battleground card was a bit more star-studded than this even. Um, I'll maybe not go that far, but this is kind of a, uh, you know, Kind of a shitty card. I've been saying this for weeks now. They just added a match, which might kick off the show. I don't know. Uh, Eva Marie, uh, Natalia, and Alexa Bliss against Carmella, Becky Lynch, and Naomi. They just reintroduced Naomi. You know, uh, all we know about her now is that she's a you know a human light show, a fucking human light bright. You know, I, I guess that's why Jericho stopped wearing the light-up jacket because they wanted to give that gimmick to Naomi. I, I don't know. I'm coming up with some theories here for you people. Uh, so you got Naomi, the human light bright, you know, electric light orchestra motherfucker over there. And, um, you know, we just were introduced to her. This is going to be Eva Marie's debut match and, I already know how this shit's going to go. You know, it's going to look like Becky's team is going to win. Naomi's team, whoever's team this it belongs to. They're going to, like, have some excuse for, like, Eva Marie. Maybe she'll be on her period. I don't know what the fuck the excuse is going to be this week. But whatever it is, um, she's probably going to be running out of the back when the, the face team is about to win. And she'll probably, like, roll up Naomi and get some heat that way, which probably won't be too bad. But that's how it's going to go. Um, Sheamus will defeat Cesaro. They got to do something for Sheamus, so why not give him the first win in the best of seven series? I cannot believe that they're actually giving us seven fucking matches with these guys. Now, based on how many wins each guy gets... That's going to differ, of course, but they're probably usually they do like to stress, stretch these matches all the way to seven. I said we hadn't had this since Booker T and Benoit. I remember Booker T got injured like halfway through it, and Orton had to take over last time. That was back in 06. Can't even believe I remember that shit, but they went, you know, to do a best of seven series, and they haven't gone back since. To, to do a best of seven series, the guys really have to have good chemistry and the match really has to be over like it was with Benoit and Booker T. It's got to be like a match that everybody gets into with a good crowd response. Where you're like, man, these two guys, I could watch them wrestle forever. Uh, now, I know people have said that about Finn Balor and Sami Zayn multiple times, but... Thank God we don't have to see that fucking bullshit. But we do have to see Cesaro and Sheamus. And it's like, I kind of like, you know, something about either guy. But, you know, I don't want to see this match. I'm, every time I see it on Raw, I want to fucking fall asleep. And I was snoozing during one of their matches a couple of weeks ago. Which was the final Raw that I watched to completion. So that should tell you something right there. The Miz will beat the Apollo Crews or Apollo Creed or whoever the fuck his name is this week. If Apollo Crews beats Miz, that's just going to be sad. I mean, you could chalk it up to it's going to be unpredictable. But let's be perfectly honest here. You know, this guy comes out during the commercial break on SmackDown. They, they don't even view Apollo Crews. And this ain't even Raw. This is SmackDown of all places. They don't even view Apollo Crews to be good enough 
to be on the main part of the show. He's got to come out during the commercials. They have to recap his appearance. And not recap it because it's so good we got to show it again. It's because you missed it because it happened during the commercials. So pretty sure that Apollo Crews will have an impressive showing, but The Miz will probably retain. Um, Enzo and Cass will defeat Jericho and Kevin Owens. This Jericho Owens thing, when I say this is a weird card, this is what I'm talking about. These guys are Canadian. Let's put them together. Why? You know, instead of doing something in the tag division, Enzo and Cass should be fighting New Day here. Now, I know that, you know, they should have just made New Day go heel. They're boring as fuck. Remember when I used to praise New Day in these videos for their originality and their, you know, um, off-the-cuff, you know, uh, promos that they used to do? And now I can't stand those motherfuckers. Uh, you know, so you see the difference. It would be prime time to turn them heel and have Enzo and Cass take the belts from them. But instead, they're stuck in some fucking... How is this pay-per-view is what I want to know. This is a match that could have easily taken place on Raw. No excuse for it having to take place on not just a pay-per-view, but SummerSlam. Four and a half hours. Um... Gallows and Anderson will beat New Day. They, they've got to end this reign for New Day. I mean, for fuck's sake, this is, you know, well, the tag division's been dying for a long time, but for fuck's sake, I mean, a whole year with New Day as tag champions. This is madness. They got to end this reign. And even though I'm not a huge Anderson and Gallows fan, any other team with New Day would be welcome. Um, Sasha will defeat Charlotte. They're not going to give the belt right back to Charlotte. Charlotte will uh, probably get mad at Dana, probably fire her ass, you know, from being her manager. Uh, Rusev will defeat Roman Reigns. Uh, Rusev will, po will probably uh, cheat in some way, and Reigns will end up passing out in the accolade. Because he already beat him clean on Raw. I don't think he's going to beat him again at the pay-per-view. Cena will defeat AJ. I noticed in my SmackDown review I said FU, but I somehow I forgot that it was an FU through the table, which was good. Um, some people might say that that means that Cena might go, you know, might job out to AJ in this match that he... You know, he might give AJ a win, but I don't think so. AJ already beat Cena, and I think Cena's probably going to end up winning here. Um, you know, just to keep things even, the, probably the last match will go to AJ when they have, you know, the, the, um, the rubber match, if they even end up having one. Um, Ambrose will defeat Ziggler. You know, even though Ziggler's all passionate and stuff, I don't think they're going to have the belt, you know, go to Ziggler. You know, they, they already, they have to still work on Ambrose as a viable champion. I'm still not buying Ambrose as world championship material here. You know, I don't think he's still worthy of the belt. I still got to see more from him. Still, he's... He's better than Balor. He's going to be a better champion than Balor, you know, just these months alone. Even though the reign hasn't been great at all, he's still better than Balor. You know, and, and here's the thing. Uh, you know, so, yeah, Ambrose will win. The next match, Balor will defeat Rollins for the Universal title. Without a fucking doubt, he's going to win. Without a fucking doubt, that guy's going to win the fucking Universal title. Um, and, and here's the thing. We're going to have two champions wearing leather jackets. Like, where's going to be the... This is why Balor should be wearing the paint all the time. Because we're going to have two Mama Lukes wearing leather jackets as champion. I mean, come the fuck on. I mean, how many... You know, it's bad enough that all these guys don't really stand out like the guys of the past. But now we're going to have two champions wearing the same fucking thing. <laughs> Great job there. Um, Lesnar will defeat Orton. You know, I, I think that we're going to see Orton counter the F5 with an RKO. 
which is going to be pretty fucking awesome. And I'm looking forward to this match. This is going to be the match that I want to see, and I think it's going to go on last. Um, should it go on last? Well, that should probably be a world title match, but they got to put this one on last. This is undoubtedly the match that everybody's looking forward to. People will tell you that they're looking forward to Balor's match, and those people are the ones that are, you know, those are the, that's the YWC there that's killing this fucking business right here. That's killing Raw. Um, you know, at least with Lesnar and Orton, you got some star power. We haven't seen these guys wrestle, so it should uh, should be pretty exciting. I, mean, I still think Lesnar will probably win with an F5. But there you go, motherfuckers. It's not looking like a great SummerSlam, but I got a feeling it's probably not going to be a terrible show. The Probably the worst thing on it is Balor being the fucking Universal Champion. That right there is enough to take away like three whole points. So right from the start, the show will probably only get a 7.5 out of 10, even if everything else is picture perfect. You got to knock off some points for having a fucking two-bit jobber. Like, bow, yeah, fuck out of here. I know you people are going to thumb down the field. I ain't going to do that. If if Rollins and Balor's a good match, you know, guys, I'll say that it's a good match. But if it's a shitty, no-selling, fucking high-spot jobber fest, then you're damn right I'm going to tear that one to new asshole. So there you go, motherfuckers. Have a nice day.